Investors are betting on cannabis stocks big time, not just buying their stock, but also trading options. Options are a great way to leverage your investment. You leverage it 100 times. Let's look into Tilray stock a little closer to figure out whether it's a buy or a sell. Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Tilray stock by analyzing its financial ratios and dissecting its financial statements so we can determine if the stock is a buy or a sell. Tilray is a Canadian pharmaceutical and cannabis company. It's incorporated in the United States with primary operations in Toronto. It also has operations in Australia, New Zealand, Germany, Portugal, and Latin America. In July 2018, Tilray became the first cannabis company to IPO on a major stock exchange. It IPO'd at $17 and was as high as $214. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1.3 billion market cap. They're trading at $9.63 a share and they have 133 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they also have negative net income each year. In 2017, they had $13 million of revenue. It almost doubled to $21 million in 2018. It more than doubled to $43 million in 2019, then went up more than three times in 2020 to $167 million. So they're growing at a pretty rapid pace. This is the company's income statement, and all the numbers are in U.S. dollars. The top line of the income statement is revenue. In 2019, they had $167 million of revenue. The cost of revenue was more than that, $190 million, which looks really bad because in prior years, their cost of revenue was lower than their revenue. This could look like a really bad sign when investing in a company if its cost of revenue is greater than its revenue. It has a negative gross profit in 2019. Let me show you why their cost of revenue was so high. The reason they had negative gross profit in 2019 was this $68 million inventory write down. When a company purchases inventory, the cost of the inventory initially sits on the balance sheet, just like it sits in a warehouse, adding no value to the company. Once the company sells the inventory to the customer, it removes the value from the balance sheet and records an expense onto the income statement. It also records the revenue it received from the customer onto the income statement. There are times when inventory loses value, so the company needs to reduce the value of the inventory on its balance sheet and pass through an impairment loss onto the income statement. Although it's not good to see when a company writes down the value of its assets, it is a little comforting that the gross loss was not due to its operations, but mainly due to this write down of inventory. So in 2019, they had negative 23 million of gross profit they had a lot of operating expenses, 193 million, so their operating income was negative 216 million. They paid $33 million of interest on its debt. It also had negative $79 million in the other field. This was mainly due to a $112 million asset impairment loss. Tilray entered into an agreement with another company to receive 49% of that company's cannabis revenues. So when Tilray initially entered into this agreement, they posted an asset on its balance sheet. After working with this company, it realized it was not going to receive the amount of money it expected. In order for Tilray to reflect the correct asset balance on its balance sheet, it had to reduce the value by $112 million to be more in line with what it expects to actually receive from this company in terms of revenue and royalties. So in 2019, they had a pretty big negative, $321 million, but they are a really young company, so it does take time to become profitable. This is the statement of cash flows, and I think this is a better indicator of a company's health than the income statement. Because the way you calculate operating cash flow, it starts with net income, then you add back the non-cash items on the income statement. You also adjust for changes in working capital. So the company only has negative free cash flow each year. So it may take a long time for this company to start generating positive free cash flow, if it ever does at all. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $430 million of debt, $285 million of equity, 
and their weighted average cost of capital is 7.33%, and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $3.2 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $2.5 billion. We divide that by 133 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 1847. They're trading at 963, so they're trading at a 48% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is even higher than me. They're at $38 a share. So they're saying the stock is really undervalued. So if you use a traditional discounted cash flow model, the valuation will come out negative because they have negative free cash flow. So I had to use analyst estimates and I also had to look at other cannabis stocks and their financial statements. Let's see where the stock has been trading since it IPO'd. Right away the stock price increased pretty dramatically, but then it's been on a downhill slide ever since, so it's at a pretty low point, under $10. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you'd have $4,300 today. That's a 57% loss. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average P.E. for the market is 16.7, the median is 15.0. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have a negative P.E. We can't look at this ratio. The average price of sales is 4.7, the median is 2.0. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 7.7, so they're doing worse than the median and average. The average price to book is 4.6, the median is 2.3, price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 4.5, so they're about average. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on a balance sheet. The average interest coverage ratio is 12.5, the median is 3.9, interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're negative since they have negative EBIT. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. That's operating income on the income statement. The average ROE is 12%. The median is 12%. ROE is net income over equity. Negative net income, so we can't look at this ratio. Average current ratio is 1.8. The median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 2.8, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. According to its annual report, at the end of December 2019, they had $97 million of cash to be held for working capital. You generally don't want to sit on too much cash when you're a company, but in their case, I think they need it. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Aurora Cannabis, Pacera, Sundial, Supernus, and Teva, all in the same industry as Tilray. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. They have a negative PE, but it's a little better than the average because the average is more negative. They're worse in price to sales and price to book. They're doing really well in current ratio. Negative ROE, they're higher in debt than average. And they're smaller market cap at 1.3 billion. Average is 2.9 billion. And nobody in this industry pays a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 48% discount. Their ratios look a bit weak and their financials also look pretty weak. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to do a private Zoom session with me, receive a custom valuation, or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.